Hello there, it's new product time here at Haltech and we've got these linear position sensors. So today we're gonna have a look through the software and see how we can put them to work for you. But first we better find out what a linear position sensor is. We've got a thicker shaft of which a thinner shaft runs on the inside. We've got a spherical bearing on either end. So as this moves in and out, we're measuring the distance based on a potentiometer inside here. We've got some wiring that comes out the back. It's a 450 millimeter long cable that goes into our Deutsch DTM3 connector, which has got a five volt, a zero volt and a signal wire. Now, once we mount this thing on a, let's say a shock platform, or we might want to measure where our gear position signal is or our park reverse neutral drive thing up inside the cabin. We might want to measure the, the angle of an active aero wing, something like that. We can mount this sensor, then put that signal wire into the engine management system, do a calibration so we can determine exactly what's going on with those moving parts. Once calibrated in the engine management system, we can data log and we can view the measured length across the calibrated range of the sensor, as well as the derivative or the rate of change of the sensor, something that's perfect for things like shock travel. One of the most common uses for a linear position sensor is for shock travel in a race car, but we've got a range of different parts here to be able to use these for any kind of position sensing in your street car, race car, whatever the application may be. First up, the linear position sensors come in a range of different body diameters and different lengths. The body diameters are either half inch or one inch. In the half inch body range, we do them in different lengths of 50 millimeters of travel, 100 millimeters, 150 millimeters, 200 millimeters, and the longest at 250 millimeters of travel. In the one inch body range, we do them in four different lengths of travel, 100 millimeters, 150 millimeters, 200 millimeters and 250 millimeters of travel. All the linear position sensors have got a 450 millimeter cable coming out the back of them that's terminated into a Deutsch DTM3 series connector. We also supply the mating side of that connector. In order to make mounting your linear position sensor a little bit easier, we've got a range of hardware that's gonna help with that. These split collars are perfect to mounting for roll cages or bar work in the back of the car, wherever's convenient in order to mount your linear position sensors. They've got a mounting position in there for the linear position sensor and they come in a range of different internal diameters. Three quarters of an inch, seven eighths of an inch, one inch, one and one eighth, one and a quarter, one and a half, up to the biggest size that we do, that's one and five eighths of an inch. The next component we've got is the weld on tab. A nice little sort of shark fin thing here that we would weld onto the body somewhere and then the little hole in the end there is to mount the travel sensor. And we've got this aluminium shock adapter that allows us to mount our linear position sensor to your half inch 20 thread shock bolt. So that's what's normally mounting the bottom of your shock absorber. Then on the other side of it, we've got a little screw that mounts straight through our linear position sensor then straight into that adapter, that tightens up, with the idea being that that would be mounted on the bottom of your shock absorber. One of the things that's really interesting about this is that this screw that I'm talking about here, it's plastic. Now, don't think that we've packaged the wrong thing, it's plastic on purpose because it's a sacrificial part. If for whatever reason the, the linear position sensor's been mounted in a place where it'll, it's gonna bottom out, Instead of smashing the sensor to pieces, we would rather this plastic part break. You can always replace this nice and easy and it doesn't do any damage to the position sensor. Now that we know what they are and how they work, let's set one up in the NSP software. Now the first thing we need to do is assign an analog input to our linear position sensor. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna click assign under shock travel sensors. Then I'm gonna click on AVI4, which is the input that I've already wired our example sensor to asking me to reset the ECU by flashing red, so okay. Now, while I'm in that screen, I'm just gonna move that linear potentiometer and we can see here in the top left-hand corner, our voltage is moving up and down. So I know that I've got the right sensor on the right input. The rest of the inputs I've already calibrated. I don't have shock travel sensors connected to any of those, but I'm sort of configuring that at least so we can see how the software works. We come up to the front left. So that's the sensor that I've got in front of me here and we come to the calibration page. 
I know that this shock travel sensor is 200 millimeters long because the packaging that it turned up with, nice sturdy box, has got the wiring diagram for the sensor, which shows us that orange is a five volt, white is the signal wire, and black is the signal ground. It's also got the picture of the Deutsch connector with the part number, with the numbers, so wiring is nice and easy. Then on the other side of the box, it gives us our calibration for the actual sensor that's in the box. The particular sensor I'm using today is 200 millimeters long. So our zero to five volts is zero to 200 millimeters. If I was using a 50 millimeter or, or a 250 millimeter sensor, everything would stay exactly the same except that maximum value. If I had a 250 millimeters of travel, it would be 250 millimeters, for example. I'll come back to 200 millimeters. And now I should be able to look at our predefined page here. So in the bottom left hand corner, I've got my shock travel front left from minimum, bring it all the way out to maximum zero to 200 millimeters. This is our uncalibrated shock travel. So that means it's the raw signal coming from the linear position sensor. Now in this particular case, I'm gonna configure them as shock travel sensors. And in the shock travel sensor, sometimes you might wanna calibrate that because you're not actually doing the full travel. And sometimes when we mount the thing, we might wanna mount it in the middle of its range when the car is just sitting stationary. I don't wanna call that 90 millimeters as such of travel. I'd like to call that zero or neutral. So if I could click up here on shock travel sensors for my front left, I'm gonna click calibrate. And in the bottom corner here now, you can now see my shock travel is sitting at 0.0, .0 meaning the car's not under any bump or rebound. Basically the, the shock absorber is not compressed and it hasn't rebounded and gone past our neutral point. From here, if our shock moves back and forward, I could see there that if the shock was being compressed, we could see that it will go into negative values. It'll show us how much compression we've got. Then as it bumps or rebounds, we can come the other way and see how much rebound we've got. And that's what we'd be looking for in the display and in the data logging in order to set our suspension set up in order to make our cars go faster. In a completely different form of racing, you might wanna use these to measure the trim of your outboard engine on your boat, or maybe your trim tabs on your inboard boat. There's so many uses for a linear potentiometer, and I'm sure that you guys are gonna exhaust them all. The linear position sensors are available now on our website, so check out the link below. It's got all the mounting gear and all the sensors with all of the sizes. As always, my name's Scott, thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.